Howdy folks! Welcome to the one and only original Opposite Attractions, featuring a bit of Americana, our musical heritage of the past. And right now, I give you a sword assortment of executioners of music and song. The Two Bear Rugs. Hit it boys! Attractions, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, the experimental, experimental prototype, prototype podcast, podcast of tomorrow. tomorrow. I am your host, as always, Scotty Moore, joined by the Imagineer in oh, training, the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin, if he was very... I have hair. If he was deprived. Uh, Jim Murphy. Yeah, I have hair. Thank you. I'm sorry. Not a lot of it, but I do have hair. I mean, uh, if, if it makes you feel... I'm, I'm, I think I, I'm working on my Imagineer training. I think I need to get a couple more merit badges. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've clearly dressed to impress if you guys are watching on YouTube. I'm currently wearing a sleeveless shirt and a baseball cap that just says whiskey. I mean, I'm, I'm here to party. Yeah. I got figments, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm here to, well, I'm celebrating the fact that I'm finally getting to go back to Disney, and I'm so hyped for it. It's only, it's been only three months away, right? Yeah, it's, uh, well, we're going in the middle of January, but, like, it's not a full week. That's peak ski season yeah it's not a full week it's like the main reason we're going is because uh my my lady loves harry potter so i was like well let's go to harry potter world we'll do this and we scheduled it in such a way that it would involve us getting there really early on friday and i was like well i got friends down there i'll see if i can get us to disney and that has gone from me being like i don't know maybe to we're doing this and you have no choice (laughs) That's mostly how my vacation planning goes. Yeah, and then it we it got to a point today where I was like, well, I should ask her like maybe what park, because I know she likes animals in nature, and I'm like, yeah, but I hate Animal Kingdom. <laughs> and so I I told her about it, and I was just like, hey, which park do you think you'd want to go to? And she just goes, you know, asking me this is just asking, hey, which hellacious roller coaster do you want to get thrown onto? And I'm like, look, you have no idea. I- yeah, I hate the roller coasters in Animal Kingdom. They go upside down, and it's awful. Does it? Oh, wait. I, oh, no, wait. I was... No. Oh, my God. Okay, so I was making a joke thinking there wasn't any roller coasters in the Animal Kingdom, but then I forgot there's a giant one with, uh, yeah. with, um, with, a, there's a, with massive, a disco yeti in it. There's a massive one with a disco yeti. Yeah, that was my favorite Which, when she was just like, yeah, I think I would like to do Animal Kingdom, and she, I was just like, well, that's fine, but you know you'd have to meet the yeti, and she goes, yeah, that sounds no. cool, and I was like, you wait. No, it doesn't sound cool at all. I'm like, the Yeti is in the massive giant roller coaster that takes you backwards through a mountain. And she's like, "Mm, it's not okay anymore. Yeah, Yeah, it's only 25 feet tall and... yeah. it, it, it loves ABBA. It's it's fine. Well, my favorite, I, I told her, I was just like, well, Epcot doesn't really have roller coasters. I mean, there's Test Track, but I'm not going to wait two hours to do Test Track. And she was just like, well, what else is there? I'm like, booze, candy... <laughs> An educational, <laughs> educational. You can go to Japan and shop. Educational rides about a, a journey through the imagination, and she's like, "I'm down with that." I'm like, "All right." Test, look, I hate roller coasters, and I love Test Track. It's, um, I don't know why, but I do love it. Mm-hmm. That truck scares the crap out of me every time. <laughs> like you know it's coming, and you're still like, "Oh, I pooped a little." It's um, it's bad. Well, I mean, I've got to get her used to it because she, I know she loves Harry Potter, and one of the Harry Potters is a roller coaster. And so I'm like, "You need to ride Disney roller coasters because yeah. those are fine." Yeah, and they don't have giant screens popping up every three <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> the first time I rode Test Track, my hands actually locked up. What the muscles in my hands tensed up like this from grabbing the bar because I didn't know what to expect and I wasn't a fan of roller coasters. So my hand was stuck like this, both of them. Uh, and they were numb and I got back to the unload and the, and I'm like, I can't unbuckle my seatbelt. And the guy goes, what? And I was like, I'm standing like this. Like I can't move my hands. You look Italian. Like, You're like, a pardon to me. <laughs> Help me please. And he goes, the guy looks down at me and he goes, I guess you're going to go again. Oh my God. 
No, and I'm like, no, seriously, I really, like, I wish I was screwing with you, but my hands are completely numb. And he's like, okay. And he reached down, he stepped down in and unhooked me. And I walked down to the end by where the picture taking thing is. Yeah. And I sat on a bench and just looked at my hands and prayed <laughs> that day. eventually that my fingers would move. Test tracks. I was really, like, freaked out. Like, I was going to have to go to first aid and be like, yeah, hi, I can't move my fingers. See, I've had that before, but I've never had it. I feel like for a very long time I was afraid of thrill rides, and that was because the only ones I rode were at shitty like pop up things that happened like outside the local mall, and they were like, "Get on these rides!" And I remember there was one, and all it you was can smell was, the rust. All it was was a loop, and the loop. Oh Jesus! It would, it would, it would just take you around in this loop, and then, like, it would take you backwards and then forwards, and it wasn't safe at all. And you ended up going, like, 5 billion miles per hour. And my tech. So it's, it's just a circle, and you... That's it. It's just a loop circle. That was it! And so oh, I was just sitting there white-knuckling it, and the same shit <laughs> happened to me. Because the way I get through parts where I don't want to be in is I just close my eyes, white knuckle it and start singing Metallica songs as if that's going <laughs> to give my masculinity a boost. So I'm just sitting there in a circle like Exit light. And then I got off the ride and I was like my hands, my hands. And now I can ride it fine. It's fine. Actually, when they used to have the camera at the inside the tunnel yeah. before the before the doors. I, I did it one time. There was a family of like three in front of me. It was literally me and then three people in the front seat. And I just like waved my hands like Kermit the Frog excitedly. Yay! And it and the picture at the end, you literally couldn't see my arms. <laughs> it was just a blur. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I think the I think that's why I like Rip you... Ride Rocket so much though, is they play the Metallica for me, so I don't even need to sing it. You... I'm like, all right, you guys have got it for me. Thank you so much. You uh you said that your your significant other is uh an agoraphobic. She's slightly ag- not fully agoraphobic. She just like, doesn't cause... like she, she but, can leave the house. She just doesn't okay. like being in huge groups of people. Because I was going to suggest if she didn't like that, you just put her in a giant mouse costume and just wander, walk her around. <laughs> people are going to love it. Um, yeah. No, like I'm talking one of the crappy like ones that you see like on a street corner in like New York City. Oh, the sad ones? The really yes. sad ones? Well, <laughs> put I, her in one of those. I know I want to... I'm going to... Uh, I know she's going to like it, I think. It's just a matter of like planning out the day. To you don't we're... have to ride roller coasters. That's the thing. They're not forcing you at gunpoint. Like, get on the ride, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, the only one I would get her to ride is, like, maybe Big Thunder Mountain or Mine Train. Like, that's the only thing I could think that what I, I would put her on that would be, in, like, thrilling. Because I yeah. want to go to, I want to start the day at Epcot, get good and slizzy, and then end the day over at Yeah, Magic that might Kingdom. help her, actually. What? Does she do better if she's completely shit-faced? Well, I mean, that is how I got on my first roller coaster, was I got real shit-faced at Universal, and then afterwards was just like, they told me the mummy was cool. Let's get on the mummy. <laughs> oh, oh, no! no! <laughs> That has to be horrible for a drunk person. Oh my heavens. Oh no, it's one of my favorites. It is Encino Man, no. Brendan, no. That is I mean, that of all theme park like quotes and weird things, like you know people have like the uh the sh- safety spiel for when you get off the monorail on a shirt. I want to get Brendan from- I have that shirt. Oh really? Yeah. I, I don't have the original. The original is red. Yeah. It was a uh, gray with red lettering. It had instead of Cinderella Castle in the back, it had uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle. It had the, it legit had the wrong castle on it. Oh no! And so finding one of those, I think they're a little rare. Um, I have the blue and gray one that has actually that has the right shit on it. <laughs> See, with me, I want to get. Uh, I want it to be like the Starbucks logo, except it's got Brennan Fraser's fray face on it. <laughs> it just says, "I wish I had gotten my cup of coffee on it," because that is my favorite quote from any ride of all time. It's just Brennan freaking out and then getting eaten. Um, so this is. I, I wait. I have follow up. Uh, because you said during Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Do, do they do anything in the Springfield Simpsons section? Not re- like they're 
well, I know we talked about there being scare zones and stuff. There's a scare zone yeah. in Simpsons Land, but I mean, it has nothing to do. It's not like a giant crusty <laughs> popping out. Like hey! I, I was thinking, I, I was uh, watching last night on FXX, and they did the episode with the uh, the um, Homer and Sons revitalizing tonic. Yeah. Or uh, or Abr- uh, Simpson and Son revitalizing, and the uh, Lisa tells that her. The, the other kids that their parents are reverse vampires. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and and I thought that would be perfect for for the scare zone for Springfield. I feel like Universal has a lot of good opportunities for really good scare zones based on the areas they already have, like Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, they have Treehouse of Horror right there. It'll turn your uh your body inside out. Yeah, see, you could do that, or like I could, I think I said in an earlier podcast, Harry Potter World just have like Death Eaters gumming around everywhere. You could do that, but no, they're just like ah, yeah. just yeah, they could get like eight foot. Nine foot tall stilt walkers running around. Yeah. That would be freaking terrifying. Yeah. Um, so this is a podcast where we create our own theme park because clearly we have opinions about <laughs> other theme parks. <laughs> We're just like, we could do this better. And uh, the theme park we've created is known as Apex. It is the peak of themed dinner. <laughs> it hurts every time I say it. Um, and it is a, it is a theme park <sighs> about superheroes. And so every yes, every week we come up with kind of a superhero themed ride, not with not involving like actual IP like Iron Man or anything. We have to make our own, which results in some ridiculous shit, like a superhero whose entire power is controlling peaches. And I can't remember who his villain, who the villain was in that ride. Who the villain of Juicy Peaches yeah. was? I can't. Yeah. I can't remember. It was. Some, yeah, I have to need to go back and listen. It was some dude who was really into fire, and the only reason I remember that is because like there was a point in the ride where he boiled the peach juice to where there was none left. <laughs> I so okay, yes, I'll have to go back and listen because we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so. Later. Uh, every week we have a theme, a challenge, if you will, of what we want to build. And this week I decided we have not had a musical ride yet. Or, like, you know, a, I guess, Splash Mountain. Because you're a crazy person. Well, Splash Mountain could be considered a musical ride, almost. Yes. And then, uh, I kind of went that direction, but not entirely. If there's a fucking juicy peach bloom at the end of it, I'm suing you. Um, <laughs> or, like, uh, I guess Little Mermaid, Finding Nemo, those are all kind of musical rides. <laughs> So that's what I've gone with. Is we need. So would you like to begin with yours? Because um, mine's a smash hit. I, 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 I'm, I, I await with bated breath. I don't know what I am going to call my ride. I don't have a name, but I felt like our park is very reliant on thrill rides and other sort of more adult entertainment. So I thought we should do like a kid family ride. Right. And uh, because I thought music, I thought of It's a Small World, the, the I don't want to say it's the greatest uh, theme park song, because it's, it's, it's definitely not. I would put um, it actually although, far on the other end of that spectrum. Well, no, I have, I, I don't know if you can see, I have the, uh, the, the album back there on the wall. Oh, wow. One of them, one of like the twelve that they put out. That one's from like the probably the late sixties, early seventies. I mean, can, I think you, I think you can get it on eBay for like three dollars. I can just quickly say, uh, worst theme park song of all time: "Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow" from fucking Carousel. Wait, have you? Uh, I'm sorry, did you not ever hear the "Now Is the Time, Now Is the Best Time"? Also from Carousel Progress, because that was there for a while. Oh no! When it was basically they they uh, General Electric was like, "Hey, we uh, we don't want." To people to think about tomorrow when they could buy our stuff today <laughs> so that is why it's called now is the time oh they, my they said, god if people that was what the executives of general electric thought they thought oh if people here it's a great big beautiful tomorrow they're not going to buy our stuff today they're going to wait till tomorrow so please change the song so they changed it for a few years and then they changed it back that's the dumbest shit okay so yours <laughs> so, so you... I'm, i i am going i do want to do a basically and it's a small world knockoff attraction with like little vignettes of uh like basically like a kitty boat ride with little vignettes of heroes that other heroes in the park like little puppets i, I didn't want to go the the route of the dolls from it's a small world yeah. like i didn't want to do that but i thought maybe the puppets from uh, Legend of the Lion King, which you probably never saw. It's where Philhar Magic is now. Oh yeah. Um, they had these like eight foot tall puppets and and little puppets, so things like that, like that kind of puppet. Okay. I think. 
but like but like care the the heroes fighting crime and of course the song would be heroes by the wallflowers but probably done in a different style than uh jacob dylan's singing yeah i i was thinking maybe like a like i i would i would try to uh hire richard sherman to come in <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, th- that is mostly what I have for that. But then I thought, like, this obviously has to, has to go in the in the hero side of the park. Yeah. Because I felt like putting a kid's friendly uh, ride in the villain side would be weird. And when I was thinking about what I could put over there as a kid ride, the uh, villain babies is what popped into my oh, head. Oh, no. That I told you the <laughs> other day. Babies. Yeah. Oh, villain Literally. babies is such a richer vein than. Fucking... Yeah, I know it's sad. I I thought that the, instead of the the nanny, it'd be the tyranny, or the tyranny. <laughs> the tie nanny. The t- oh my god! Um, okay. So... Yeah, I don't know what, because I, I just wanted to be a, a cartoon show, really, with like a cartoon Titan and a cartoon uh, Keanu Reeves as a baby. I forgot Keanu Reeves is a villain in our part. Um, so, I well, here's what I, I kind of want. I'm going to take your two ideas and mesh them. So it's going to be in the middle of the park. And so if you're a hero, you go in and you get the normal hero baby experience. No. And it just takes you through everything. You're like, yeah, heroes. But if you're a villain, it starts you out through the heroes area. And then it takes Uh-oh. you to, I guess, a backstage area where it's just the baby villains just like, they never let us have any fun. <laughs> oh, no, I have um, uh, originally uh, what the plan was for um, Muppets in Disney World was that they wanted to build a, uh, in the studios a Muppet great movie ride. Okay. Or a great Muppet movie ride or something. And basically it would be all the or, uh, scenes that were basically exactly the same as in the great movie ride, but it would be the Muppets filming them. Oh my god, I'm... Fi- I'm not, um, not since I learned about Beastly Kingdom at Animal Kingdom have I been so upset about something the, that didn't um, happen. Yeah, it's because uh, Jim Henson sadly passed away that they didn't really do it. But the only art I saw of it was actually from was like a Frankenstein thing. So that's not in the great movie ride. Yeah. But it was a Frankenstein thing with like Kermit and Gonzo and them filming it. And um, Beaker and Bunsen Honeydew playing like Frankenstein. And they're but but like Beaker's getting the crap shocked out of himself <laughs> by the lightning. Okay. Oh wait, so are so you saying would, the, would, the villains would be filming? The... So no, no. I think I feel like it would be, um, it would be the exact same as the hero side, but the villains would be like somehow screwing it up. Oh, okay. But it would be, but they'd be screwing it up in a way where it seems like they're not supposed to be there. Okay, cool. I like that. So it just combines the two worlds. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, so mine, I didn't go <laughs> little, the sh- <laughs> little villain babies. <laughs> <laughs> real real villain baby yeah they'll rip your dreams in two mm-hmm. oh my god yes <laughs> um, i'll do the same to you too <laughs> villain babies they'll rip you right in two um so it's, my... that's i i thought about this though i thought about the fact that like that 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 reference yeah. is only good to people that are like our age yeah and like the younger people that would see this and be like i don't really know what that is because i don't know if that's even on like if you can even watch reruns of that show because of all the licensing problems oh muppet babies yeah yeah muppet babies was glorious how dare they um <laughs> yeah so with my with mine i did not go the kitty route I went, I wanted, as you know, usually, since you've got a history with theme parks, you have, like, this whole, like, well, I'm going to make it very, like, this and like this, and I'm going to figure out how to make everything. Meanwhile, I just come up with some bomb-ass intellectual property for our park to put on shirts. Hey, the, villain babies could go on a shirt. Come I'm, on. I'm the bastard who runs our merchandise website, and I'm like, all right, Jim, come on. Give me an idea. Give me something to throw this in. So I've come up with a new hero, and he's kind of – he's similar to Superman in that he's an alien. Um, and, of course, is Superman – as you know, Superman has his Kryptonian name, which is Kal-El. So, too, does this hero have his uh, Martian – he's from Mars – his Martian name, which is Kevin Bacon. And so, um... Oh, Jesus Christ, I just got it! Oh, no! It just hit me. So, 
So, um, and I'm not going to reveal his superhero name yet. It's also the name of the ride. <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh. and so uh, of course, as we've learned, all of humans get their superpowers from... Oh, man. Uh, from this mystical stream of, I guess, stardust in the sky that gives them powers. I also like barely Kevin. Yes, Bacon Cody Rhodes made, gives them powers. Yes, I like Kevin Bacon made you cry, which was great. Um, well, Kevin Bacon came to Earth in a pod one day. Stop saying it. It makes it worse. Kevin Bacon. It's. So- he that was sh- the that was the guy that played the banker in Mary Poppins. Yeah, and so he shows up to Earth one day, and as you know, Superman gets his powers from Earth's yellow sun. Uh, our hero gets his powers from Earth's rock and roll. And so when you get on his ride, he's like, let me bring you into my world of rock and roll. And he just starts grooving and dancing, and you're feeling it with him. And you're like, yeah, Kevin oh, McCann. No. And then all of a sudden, you feel shackles around your arms and your feet. And so you're stuck in place and you can no longer move and dance. And then out comes, um, I guess he is kind of like a Lex Luthor. He is in a suit and his name is Milo Strange. And Milo does not approve of dancing or (laughs) rock and roll. And so he's just like, no, I refuse to let this rock and roll and dancing pervert our park any further. So he's aware that it's a park. He's like, no, 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 this is demon shit. And so he's like, I guess a fundamentalist Christian, you could say. And then (laughs) there's this awesome scene where Kevin Bacon's following you around. He gets really angry and some villains are coming at him. So he just starts punch dancing. (laughs) And he punch dances and destroys all the villains coming at him. And uh, eventually it leads for you to go to Milo's lair alongside Kevin Bacon. And he's just like, no, I'm going to save you with the power of rock and roll and Jesus. I don't know why Jesus has been brought in. And so at which point, uh, hold on, let me just, <coughs> let me pull out this, my old six string here. Uh, Kevin Bacon pulls out his guitar that his ma and pa Bacon, I guess, gave him at birth. And he plays this little ditty for the audience. Let me just... Oh, Oh, shit. (laughs) I did not learn this part of the song that well. Hold on, let me... Yeah. Was living on Mars, got sent out in pods, came down on Earth, said, Hey guys, what have you got? I got this feeling when I picked up my guitar. They hit the ceiling when I rocked out that bar. And now they call me Footloose, Footloose. That's the name that they choose. Me, Ooey, the savior of humanity. Yo, Milo, come on, you got to go. Get bruised, you lose. Cause everybody loves Footloose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you not watching on YouTube, Jim Jim has pulled out he has pulled out a uh, a lighter a lighter app on his phone. No, um, not no, just a picture of a lighter. Thank you. <laughs> and then at that point, like Marty McFly at the beginning of Back to the Future, a giant amplifier busts out. And it sends uh, Milo Strange through a wall, and he's just like, "No!" And he nearly dies. And then, and then <laughs> that's why he thinks rock and roll is dangerous. It cost him <laughs> it did kill full him. bodily harm. And then uh, I know this is not from the same film, but then uh, I guess whoever the uh, you know obviously Clark Kent had uh, Lois Lane. I don't know what the Lois Lane of Footloose, aka Kevin Bacon, would be. 
but she comes out and they uh they dance to um uh oh shit what's the song i've had the time of my life i know it's, it's Lori different... singer yes it's yeah. Laurie, well, Laurie singer was uh was the was the lead uh the lead lady of Footloose, but then you, you went to Dirty Dancing <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're just going to throw in Dirty Dancing as well. I mean, it's just all good dance movies. I mean, I like to think there's a scene possibly where uh, where they have a break dance battle. <laughs> you know, this whole time I've just been really focused on I want to do a Footloose ride, but now I realize <laughs> that I have no idea what the ride is. I just described the plot of Footloose. You... You you started out where uh, somehow you're dancing and then you get chained to the floor. Uh huh. Which uh so that's my honeymoon. Uh huh. Um, and then you uh you you, uh, you play Never by Moving Pictures. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then you sing Footloose. Uh. The, the hero uh, version. Well, the initial version of Footloose, yeah. and then there's the, of course the reprise when he defeats. <laughs> and then yeah, and then you kill uh, John Lithgow. Oh my God! Um, yes. Apparently, and and then you, I guess, are released from your shackles somehow, and you put on a blue powder suit. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Is when I also like I'm just slowly playing guitar in the background because to add to if, it. I think you could do... This would be horrible. If the ride was not fast, if it was like a slow-moving thing, well, it you could, could... I'm thinking maybe a great, big, beautiful tomorrow in, in like a, in a uh, carousel of progress where you go into the first one and you just see Kevin Bacon chilling in a chair and he's like, hey, guys, tap dance, and then he gets chained to his chair and it's like, oh, no. Then you go into the next room... And it's, uh, it's, uh, Milo Strange, and he's like, yo, duh, which, by the way, his name is Milo, literally just because I needed to fit that word, fit that part in the song. Um, and so then you go to the next one, and Milo's like, I right, no, no more anti, no more Jewish dancing. Uh, and then... No, that, that it was filmed in Utah, so... Uh-huh, and then you... There was the Mormons. Then you go into the next room, and then that's where you have the big punch dance scene happening between... No, no, no! The next... Oh, no, because dancing's already been outlawed at this point. I wanted to have a break dance battle, but I didn't get... We're gonna have to save that for the sequel to this ride. And so... Well, uh, the original Carousel of Progress in Disneyland had a second floor. Oh my god, what? Um... Yeah, and it was cause... full of breakdance battles. Between no, that's what I'm saying. Things. That's what you do. That's what you do. Yeah, it actually had a. You actually got to the end, and you actually went. You the the, the theater you were in actually went up a ramp. Yeah. And into an upstairs, and you rode around, and what was in the middle was the original model for Epcot. Um, so you could see it, but and which now a part of is in uh, the People Mover, the one building in the People Mover. That's okay. part of the Epcot, and it's really sad because I, every time I went by there, I was like, I just want to break through the wall and just walk around in there and take pictures so but, what you're I, saying is on this one we save i i think we yeah. save the i've had the time of my life dance for that no. so instead of having like this one triangular pie out of a circle it's a full circle ballroom and you yeah. watch as they saying, dance you, you go up and it turns into uh videopolis yeah <laughs> disneyland or uh mannequins yeah oh no no i like the idea that at the like the big majestic picks her up moment of i've had the time of my life puts her back down and then instead of dancing she just kind of like crosses her arms and then you hear oh shit dance battle (laughs) and then out comes cruise oh god i I really thought you were gonna say that he she crossed her arms and it becomes the ending of the movie xanadu (laughs) no 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 crosses arms then out comes a giant crew of superheroes that you've seen. So, like, Juicy Peaches shows up, <laughs> Neil and Greg, all your favorites. Huge I forgot dance. about Neil and Greg, son of a bitch. <laughs> Neil and Greg pump, pimp out, and you just have this giant dance battle between them, and then that's how it all ends. And, like, people get selected from the audience to join in, and it's a really fun end to this. It's the it's the Footloose dance party now at Apex. So I think if you're going to design this building, if you're going to use the carousel progress style thing and yeah. have two floors, I feel like the 
the loading area would be outside on the bottom mm -hmm. and then you would go up and the ride would be on the second floor and then you would come down to the dance party thing on the first floor and there would be some way out on the first floor that would cause you to not get run over by a, a, the a moving theater. Uh, or people. you could pull it, you could do it like uh, Figment, how at the end of Figment you have like, you can either just go to the gift shop or you can stay in that little party area. That's what the party area is. So you oh end God, it. That is not a party. Area. And so you, yeah, it's a sad area, but this it might've been be... in 2001, but it isn't anymore. And so the end of this one, okay, fuck it. Although if you it. put a, if you put a rainbow tunnel in, I am there. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, you go out and you just see the actors that were just in the ride you were in. And they're out having, like, this big dance party, but also a dance battle. And that's just what happens. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my idea this week. <laughs> and so, so the ride's called Footloose. That is, the, the attraction is called Footloose. It's called the Footloose Dance... Well, no, yeah, Footloose, and then the Footloose Dance Party is what happens afterwards. Let's see, let me just... Oh, wait, no. I would... Yeah, Footloose. That was a it was a Paramount uh, film, so they could put it in King's Dominion. I don't know if Paramount still owns King's Dominion. I doubt <laughs> they do. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's that's <laughs> we can get it. We can get those rights. I think. Um, <laughs> all right, so Jim Murphy, that was oh, my shit. idea. We've got oh, we've got the spirit of Kevin Bacon here. Um, so what's Oh, oh my god his villain has to be keanu reeves it has to be <laughs> then there's like we've got two famous actors here and they they fight um are you looking up if there's any beef between kevin bacon and keanu yeah, i'm reeves? looking to see uh i'm going to a uh, six degrees of separation and seeing what they are oh between kevin bacon i'm gonna say a yeah. two it, it is a, a two yes yeah but i was hoping if they were if there was a uh just a one uh, if they actually were in a movie together. No, that's where the rivalry comes from, is from the fact that Kevin Keanu is mad that his Kevin Bacon number is not higher, and that's why they have <laughs> that's why there's such great enemies. His his pecan number. His pecan number. Uh so that that that's what resulted <laughs> from our challenge this week. Do you have our challenge for next week, Jim? Um I was just gonna suggest uh su and I don't know how this would work given our um uh our theme of our park but i want to do something with animals so yeah we could do like a super dog i, I well no i actually this is so stupid i i thought about this yesterday and i had an idea and i'm not gonna say what it is because that'll be next week okay. yeah i did have it but yeah animals so, something with animals okay okay I'm it doesn't have to that. be a super powered animal but you can uh, like it, uh, like it's it has just to be, a fucking no, turtle. It has to be. It has to. Yeah, they're not ninja, nor are they, they teenage. Terrence uh, went to space and he came back. What was his power? He just became a turtle, like <laughs> like a powered turtle. No, just a turtle. That's it. No, I'm just saying the, the the attraction has to be animal centric. It just can't have like a dog in it. Oh, okay. All like right. Rover in uh, um, like like Rover in Carousel Progress. Yeah. All right, so Jim Murphy, where can they find you oh, on the internet? Uh, oh, on the internet. Okay, because I was getting scared. Um, yeah, I am on Twitter at apparently smart, oh, right. and I haven't done much with that lately. And I'm still trying to. I've had uh, because of the little kitten I adopted. I'm, I've had a, not a lot of time to work on my uh, Disney fifth park, but I, I will get back into that soon. Yeah, that that kitten. That kitten has taken over yeah. your life. Yeah, he, yeah, I have to, I, I have to feed it every like two to three hours. Yeah, it's so tiny. All right, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S C O T T Y E M O. You can buy my book on Amazon. It's called Queasel Corp: A Tale of Dicks and Douchebags. A great, a great purchase for Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. It's spelled Q U E Z A L C O R P. Make sure to check out this podcast and all the other amazing BS Network products over at a load of pure BS dot. Come while we're at it, make sure to go pick up some opposite attraction merch over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. It's the Christmas season. Get yeah. you a juicy peaches. Peaches t-shirt, yes, please. 
Please uh, do. Yeah, get the Juicy Peaches shirt or an Apex shirt. And then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're uh, listening on Stitcher or iTunes, make sure to rate, subscribe, do all of that good stuff for us. And as always, it is the giving season. So make sure to help us out by donating to our Extra Life campaign over at bit.ly slash BSVS Cancer. That's BS versus Cancer. Every single little bit helps, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, you can find us online at opposite dot... At, uh, fuck! Footloose! Footloose! At footloose.com. At footloose.com and at opposite dosh, dosh attractions dot com and remember you can find us on facebook and twitter at op at show that's spelled o-p-p-a-t-t-s-h-o-w are you down with o-p-p um footloose.com redirects to a travel company website oh of course it's, why not i had a thing Don't forget to gather your belongings. And your husband, too. It's been good to have you. So long, folks.